in the pulpit, but let's take it a step further, what's not been taught at home? Wow. Ain't going to get no way to right there. Come on. Come on. Because we live in a, we live in an age and time right now, and uh, and Gene knows I, I'm old school sometimes. And uh, is that is that a lot of times this new age gospel thing that we say is a gospel is all it is is compromise. Right. Come on, you can still fornicate, you can still have adultery, and then you can still say I'm blessed of God and have all the blessings of God upon you. You can't come out from among the world and be you separated. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. I like to pat myself on the back. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> but, but one of the things is, is, is actually true, being true with God on a personal level. Every day of your life, living for God and being honest with God. Joe, is where, where it comes into effect is our relationship with God. And that's where we're going to go today. Joe, go ahead and, and, and read there in Genesis chapter. Go ahead. Well, just, just on what you said, I, I, I'll read that, but just on what you said, Come on. there was a priest in the Bible, and I didn't know it was going to be going this, so I would have knew his name right off, but I don't. But he had two sons named Hophni and Finn. Mm -hmm. And the priest understood the workings of the temple, how things, how God designed things, how He wanted things. But in that, He never did, His sons was allowed to do what they wanted to do in the house of God. Mm -hmm. Even God, even, they would go in and they, they would eat the bread they weren't supposed to touch. They, would, they, they, they was bringing women in there and they was doing things in the house of God that shouldn't have been. And He never did correct them on it. He let them go. And at the end of it, it's, they ended up losing their life and it says that he fell backwards and broke his neck. And, and he was never actually stood up even though he was a uh, high priest and he was doing the works of God but he was not a man and not a father to them boys and eventually it cost them all their lives. That's the truth. And we, you, know, you, can be, you, can be, you can be a winner in the pulpit and be a loser at home. Yeah, that is exactly it. It, it, you know, we, we can preach and teach and minister, and you know what? And our giftings is for the edifying of the body, uh -huh. but I can go home and be an absolute mess and never teach my kids, That's never true. show my wife any honor, never show her respect. At the end of the thing, it'll be me that'll lose my life, and they will end up eventually losing theirs without That's a touch of God. Because you can you can stand here. Anybody can stand here and sing and preach. And God will use those gifts. My gifting to teach and to minister is not for me. It's for you. That's it. But when I leave this place, I am still required to seek God for myself, to learn to live by faith, and to live right, upright, and live to the best possible holy life that I can. Uh -huh. right. And if we don't, it ends up costing. And, and, and we're going in Genesis here, but... But with Hophni and Phineas, Eliab. Yeah, Eliab. Yeah. Told you I don't remember. If he hadn't manned up That's the truth. and did, played not only the role of the priest, but also as king, priest, mm -hmm. and prophet of his own home, he wouldn't have died early. No. His children wouldn't have died early. No. And they would have probably went on and serve God and become another great ministry. But when we don't do what we're supposed to do at home, it, cost, it, don't, it not only cost us, but it cost the next generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are two voices that was never heard in the house of God again because the dad did not do what God called him to do. And that's exactly what, what he's saying, you know. You, you, when you come in here, you, you walk in here with all the saints of God, Troy. And what happens is, is in here when all the saints of God comes together, we all pulling off each other and feeding. And this it's going to be anointed in here. And, and it's, it's one thing in here, all of a sudden you feel the presence of God, you feel God moving, but then when you leave the grounds, the property of the church, you go back to travel a mile, five miles, or back to London, or wherever you may live, Corbin, uh, and you travel back to, you, you're away from church people, then all of a sudden, Everything when you're in the presence of God around people, God, you ever feel like, and how many can witness this by liberal intent? 
You, just when you get around people of God, it's just like everything else just leaves you and you just get like peace. See, that's, that's the anointing of God. That's why it's important to come together and fellowship. And what I was saying about being real uh, is if we can't, if I can't be real with Dylan, I can't be real with Troy. If I'm struggling with something, I can't come to Troy and say, Troy, you know, man, I, I'm having an issue right here. See, we hide our issues when we go in isolation and think, if I tell, if I tell that, then, then everybody's going, they're just going to throw me out. I'm not, I'm going, uh -uh. And what happens is that, that cancerous, spiritual cancers begins to grow. And what happens?